I I was just wondering, like, because for me, I I deal like with a lot of uh, like people who kind of like don't care about veganism. Like, well, actually, I've only really dealt with one who doesn't care about like animals. So I was just wondering uh, how you would like make it objective. I mean. So, the thing with objective morality is you can make it objective just like how you would make really any other concept objective. Like, for example, I think most of us will see math as objective, meaning like 2 plus 2 always equals 4. Like, it doesn't really matter if there's any minds to interpret it. But, of course, you need the minds to, um, you know, interact with this concept and to kind of have this concept be more than just you. And that's kind of how you make morality objective is you make it not just your notion of good. You make it, you know, basically everyone's notion of good. And then you come to a compromise from that. And what people don't realize is when you come to a compromise from everyone's values um, or everyone's, you know, rational values, which I guess I'll go into, um, then that does bottom out at veganism because, you know, it, this would include the animals and they don't want to get, you know, uh, brutalized and such. Um, but yeah, so I think that the first thing to understand when it comes to like objective morality and why objective morality is true versus subjective morality is with complete sub subjectivism, you can just completely disregard what you value overall, which is happiness. And for example, like, I don't know, let's say like you're not in a financial position to like have a child or what have you. And, you know, it would just cause you a lot of suffering and overall suffering if you, you know, had a child at this point, but then you have a child at that point anyway. Um, so that would actually be immoral because it's going against what you fundamentally desire, which you can't help but desire, which is well-being, right? So firstly, what, what I think you should prove to people is that they have an obligation to themselves and then... Uh, Oh, damn, it's like hailing really hard. But after you um, show them that they have an obligation to themselves, then you'll uh, show them how, you know, animals are entailed with that, meaning they probably already care about animals, so they're probably going against their own values by not being vegan. Um, but then again, they're also going against their own value of learning philosophy and having knowledge, which humans fundamentally value because that's how we survive and such. And that's how we, you know, we feel justified in our beliefs. And without the ambiguity of subjective morality, if you actually know that something is right, then that is more conducive to your interest of knowledge, right? Um, so that's kind of the, the big thing uh, is... Uh, morality needs to be objective and then once you get them to accept that then they need to think well what objective morality should I follow and I think that would all always bottom out to something that entails veganism because if you take something like for example religious morality they can't even substantiate God um, and stuff like that and yeah and it also just breaks the conception of value like for example like if you say oh I value killing a cow right now mm -hmm. the only problem with this well you can value it but i wouldn't say you're justified in your value of it because uh, that breaks the language game because for one individual it's not valuable and for another individual it is valuable and i see this synonymous to like for example let's say i look at a chair and someone else looks at a chair and i say hey that's a chair and they say that's not a chair okay so what are we supposed to do here we're supposed to come to a compromise and we're supposed to actually agree to something and that's how language works and this is how ethics can work is if we just um, agree to that and we come to compromises on that and that's how you solve ethics um, but yeah yeah um okay so I sorry <laughs> I um I really I actually really haven't heard this point of view before mm -hmm. um so right uh so if you're dealing with someone, like, I, I don't know, like, I'm stupid. I don't know if, like, you went, like, over this, but, um, like, if you're dealing with someone, like, some, like, fucking, like, stoner, right, that does not, like, care about, um, like, anything, like, they say that they'll just, they're, like, okay with, like, um 
like with the argument, oh, let's just um, like infinitely breed uh, cognitively disabled people and uh, like just like they don't care if it if like um, if it's like not needed, if it's for food, then it's for food, like that kind of person. Mm -hmm. What would you say in that situation? I mean, I would really ask them, like, where their values lie. If it just lies in, like, just not giving a fuck about anything and just going going among life like nothing really matters. And I think the problem with just having that kind of mindset that nothing really matters is uh, something I call the threat of nihilism. And it's when everything mm -hmm. is, like, meaningless, nothing really matters. Um, and yeah, at, at, at that point, the ambiguity in what actually matters and what you're supposed to be doing is so like muddled that uh, it's just not conducive to what you want. So that's what you kind of have to point out to these people is that if, if they think everything is meaningless and such, they're not even looking for meaning. And I'd argue if they did look for meaning, um, they could rationalize into my position, which I think is the most rational position, but I mean... Um, yeah, uh, I just think if you don't care about anything and if you think everything is meaningless, then, yeah, you run into the threat of ambiguity within your position, which is not good. Um, but, so, yeah. Hopefully that answers it well. Um, I know yeah. it's kind of a nuanced answer, I guess, but I mean... Well, what if we put, like, like, uh... So I dealt with this one person, they threw taste into the equation, like, okay, um, we bumped it up a little bit, uh, and we went on to, okay, so if aliens used the same, um, the same, like, argument as you're making right now, and said it was okay to uh, infinitely uh, rape, breed your mom, and kill your mom and just clone the shit out of her um, just because she tasted good. Um, do you think that um, an animal could value another animal like you value your mom mm -hmm. to go against that? And if you were in that position, would you think like that animal, I guess? Um, I'm kind of confused as to what you're asking. Like, um, so if we're, so his moral, like his values lie in his mother. Mm -hmm. And if it was okay, like if he felt it was okay, if his, like, if this animal tasted good, um, like, from that position like him being the apex predator if aliens came down infinitely raped breed uh clone the shit out of his mom and killed her right mm -hmm. um would he be okay with that and do, does he think that um animals can have that kind of connection where they'd be not be okay with animals um raping you know cloning infinitely cloning their mom and well i mean her. i'm not really sure if the animals could really even conceptualize that to be honest but i mean i think most people if they were you know asked that question of like oh um you know you put up this standard that you're fine with you know um the apex predator like breeding and raping and what have you to the you know um individuals who are below you and then you get them to back off of that because they realize wow if aliens came down i don't think it would be justified for them to do that so for the same reason it's not justified for me to do the same thing um so i think most people would agree that like they wouldn't want aliens to come down and do that so that, like i think most people would just see that that position is just not like it's not actually conducive to what they want um but yeah, and that's why I, I do see a little bit of merit in Name the Trait. Like, that's basically mm -hmm. basically what you were uh, putting forth. 
But mm -hmm. the one thing I think people should do with name the trait is once you get the difference that they think justifies um, killing one individual, uh, I would just pull pull this into question like very very um, rigorously, like why the arbitrary thing they picked is actually valuable because you know a great vegan talking point that i hope everyone ends up embracing is that value isn't just whatever the hell you want it to be like your feelings shouldn't really affect value just like how your feelings shouldn't affect whether or not two plus two equals four like it is objective in the sense that everyone's everyone fundamentally values well-being is the first thing and then um, more nuanced on that and with applied ethics, everyone values a certain thing. So then we come to compromises from these values and that's like the right thing to do. It's not just whatever one person wants to do. And like, especially if they're political and maybe they're thinking about um, like how a society should be ran and built and stuff like that. It really has to be built on everyone's values or else you're going to really see what the fuck's going on. Um, because once you disregard their values and they feel like their their values aren't being taken into consideration, then you see the riots, um, you see, you know, Chaz or what, whatever. <laughs> um, you see all sorts of things. That's actually, um, that's actually a really good point. Because, like, if we were, like, talking about, like, like murder or something, right? We, we see that as, like, it, it's wrong, but someone can conceptualize it as not wrong mm -hmm. and it's objective not to kill someone is that is that the point that you're making well well my point is it's kind of like when one person thinks it's okay to murder people and then like seven people are against it it's kind of like one person who thinks that um like that thing over there is a chair and then the other seven people don't think it's a chair so then if you want to operate in ethics and you want to make it objective, you have to come to the agreement that it is a chair. So then for the same reason, you'd have to come to the agreement that, like, that murder is murder. And even if they, like, um... And then again, this goes for, like, rational, justified values. Like, for example, if a bunch of people valued eating meat over an animal's vital interest, like... At that point, I would say, you know, they're probably not justified in doing that because the animal values its life way more than all of those people combined value, you know, eating the flesh. So it's a value hierarchy. Um, so that goes for yourself and that goes for, you know, everyone else. Um, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. So like with 90% like ninety eight percent of our population. I mean, of course, we'd have to go through name the trait first, or um, something like questioning their morality or what they value. Um, but like, just from like ninety eight percent of our population, it's like, um, would that be like going against veganism with like? The objective morality. Sorry. Well, no, I think that, well, yeah, all of these people think that, you know, veganism isn't conducive to what they actually want. But I mean, I, if they tapped into their rationalization, I think they'd actually realize what they want. And that is what rationalization is. So once they rationalize, I think they'll come to the conclusion that veganism is the right thing to do, even if it's not, it doesn't take very much rationalizing, if you could call it rationalizing at all. Like, most people, I think, just straight value animals. So if you showed them what's going on, I think they would agree with veganism. But practically, even if we take everyone's, like, what they think right now, which I don't think is all too, like, informative, I care about what's, like, entailed with them uh, from human nature and what um, is... Um, how should I put this? What is a part of humans and what they want, right? And what they fundamentally want might not be what they realize right now. So I hope that doesn't like confuse anything. But even if we did take the population um, or like all considerable beings into consideration, it would be in a line with veganism because these people and the animals don't want to be, um, you know, brutalized and murdered. 
and yeah even when it comes to just the effects of animal agriculture on this planet like humans fundamentally don't like the things that animal agriculture does to them like with heart disease or the environmental problems um and yeah that's a really good point i'm sorry i'm new to like debating and stuff so i'm like I'm no not exactly, that's all right it is like, kind of confusing it is um yeah i got into it like months ago so i'm still like learning so i just wanted like that point of view because i know like if you could prove morality is subjective i feel like that would be the strongest or not subjective objective um that would be the strongest uh vegan argument because there's no way that they could really fight that mm -hmm. if you prove that i mean um, actually oh sorry no it's all right i mean like it's yeah, you basically prove that morality is objective, but I mean, I don't think that it's something that is discovered. I think that it, it, it is something that is constructed, just like how math is constructed and science is constructed. But the thing is, like, just because something is constructed, it doesn't mean that it's subjective. Um, but once someone realizes that morality can be objective, then... Uh, then that kind of opens up the door to defining it as being objective, like especially vegans. Like you said, like it, it's a lot harder to argue against objective morality than subjective morality, or at least I think that's what you were trying to get at. So every vegan should be interested in defining morality to be objective and showing others why they should define morality to be objective. Like, like how I talked about the threat of nihilism and thinking that life is meaningless, and then that would probably increase you know, your depression and suffering, which is intrinsically bad.